Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for how do I use the combo box on selection changed event. So let me go ahead and run this. Basically, I had a comment pop up on a video, and the person was asking, how do you select an item in a combo box? And then based on that, select another item in a second combo box. And then based on that, you can do something in a button. So basically, what we want to do is we have our combo box here, which is filled with three options. Depending on which option I pick, it will fill up the second combo box. So as you can see here, we have one, two, and three. But if I change this to option three, we now have seven, eight, and nine. Once we actually select two of them, our button is filled in. And if we pick one that I have a valid selection chosen, it'll tell us what we chose in each of the boxes. Now that's going to use the on selection changed, and hopefully this will clear that up. So let's cover how that works. So inside of your combo box itself, you have two events. You have the on selection changed and the on opening. We're going to use the on selection changed. Let me go ahead and disconnect one of these so we can see it in action. If you've done nothing, you'll have them both set up as pluses. What we're going to do is click the plus, and we now create our on selection changed for the combo box that we had chosen. In this case, it's combo box one. Now when you do that, you have the execute node, the selected item in string format, and then the selection type. Now we're not going to care too much about the selection type. We care about the string. But the selection type, if I was to do a select, basically it's the key press. If we navigated to it, like with the gamepad or the keys themselves, on a mouse click or a direct selection. Like, for example, we told this combo box to go to this item through runtime. For the most part, our navigation type isn't really going to matter. We just care about what we chose. And that's going to be this, the selected item. This is just going to output a string. If I was to print that out, we would see whichever option I chose. Now, when I set these up, if we go into our combo box itself, we see that I have CB1 space option space 1. Same thing with option two and option three. I've simply set it up in here. You could always add them programmatically, which I will show you how to do for the second box. But basically, we're going to select an option here. Based on the option, we're going to fill in this box. And assuming both of them are selected, this will highlight. We'll be able to push it, and then we'll get a result. So what we do here is we pass in our selected item, and we store it. We want to store it for later use, so that way when we push the button, we'll know what selected item we have for combo box one. After that, for a safety check, what we're doing is we're clearing everything out of combo box two and then clearing whatever we have selected. So that way when we run it, you'll notice over here we have nothing selected and we have options here. If I was to change this to option one and not run those two pieces, two nodes, this would add on other items and we'd still show what we had selected before. So we go ahead and clear out everything from combo box two, and then we go ahead and clear whatever we had selected. Next thing we do, and here's the important part, is we switch on string. We basically put in our string, we've set it up where we have three options for our switch, each one corresponding to our options, and then based on whatever we chose, we do something appropriately. What we're doing here is taking combo box two. Keep in mind, we've already cleared it out and it's now empty. And we're adding in our options. I'm adding in combo box two, option one, option two, and option three. These are just simply strings that represent what options we have available. So let's say, for example, you were building a tank and you had five different types of tank. You might have in your combo box one, tank, jeep, uh, machine gun nest. And then once you chose tank, in option one, you had Abrams and, I don't know, Panzer and then something else. So you had your different types of tanks. Or if you chose the next option here, which was a Jeep, maybe you had a, I don't know, an army Jeep, a navy Jeep. Um, I don't know. I don't know my military vehicles, obviously. But you'd have your different options for your second set of options. So when you chose your first one here, it passes in and you add in your options for one. 
pass here, you add in your options for your second choice, and then pass here, you add in your options for your third choice. So we're adding them in programmatically. This isn't exactly the best way to do it. A better way may be to have arrays with each, with each of your options, and then you loop through, and then you go and you add them. So that way all you can do is update one single array, maybe in your variable list, and have these things automatically fill out properly. But that's more advanced. This is just a basic example of how to use the on selection changed and how to pass along variables. So when this finishes, we're now going to have stored our first selection and we're going to have our second combo box filled up with the appropriate selection. So once it's filled up, we have the same thing on selection changed for combo box two. So when we select combo box two, we save it because we want to save that for later. And then we check to see if combo box two is equal to nothing. Why are we doing this? Well, when we do this, when we do the clear selection, if we had something in here, let's say we had a chosen option, we were banking a panzer tank. And then we decided, no, well, we don't want the panzer tank anymore. We're not going to make a tank. We're going to make a Jeep. When we select the Jeep in the first combo box, when we clear out the options and clear the selection, our selection did change. Combo box two is going to fire and it's going to save it and then move, go on. If we're not checking to see if it's empty, as in we've cleared it, we're going to have issues because we're going to assume we selected something. So by checking to see if it's empty and doing a true, what we're doing is we're disabling our button. But if it's not equal to empty, if there is something selected, we're enabling our button. So that way you see this, we choose option one, disabled. We choose option one, now it's enabled. If I was to go over here and choose option two, this is clear and empty, and our push button is disabled. So that's why we go ahead and do that. So that way it's only enabled when we actually have a valid option here. So let's say we've gone ahead and we've done this, option one, and we've done this, option two. Now our push button is enabled and we push me, we get this choice. Well, we're doing basically the same thing we did earlier with our switch statement. Basically on clicked, what do we do? Well, I'm clearing out our little text box just so it doesn't overlap the text. This is just a visual thing. But here's what matters. We're taking our selection from combo box one and putting it into another switch like we did before when we filled out combo box two. Based on what we chose, we now check and see what's in combo box two with another switch. And then we feed down to what we actually do. So let's say for example, with our military example, which I'm failing at, combo box one is a tank. And then we go over here and we see, okay, well, which tank did we choose? And let's say we chose option one, which is a, I don't know, panzer tank, I said, maybe, I don't know. Let's say option one is a panzer tank. We go over here, and then now, after we've clicked our button, we went tank, up to here, panzer, up to here, and then we ran our code that spawned a panzer tank. Or let's say right here we had the next tank. I don't have a clue. Um, let me, you know what, this is... Let's see, tank types. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I'll make it easier because I know the word light, heavy, and medium. So we have a light, medium, and heavy tank. So let's say we chose this and we spawned a light tank. Or we chose option two, medium tank, or option three, heavy tank. Or in this case, if we chose a Jeep instead of a tank, well, then you do the same thing. I haven't connected it, but just run off your wire, select item two, and then go from there. It's a little large, it's a little more robust than you may want it in a production environment, but for a quick test or a prototype or starting off with before you start refactoring your code, this is an easy way to basically populate a combo box at runtime, which we do here, save what's in your combo box, which we do here and here, check and see what's in both of the combo boxes and enable do things appropriately. In this case, we've made sure combo box one and two are both filled out before we enable the button. And then once you do something with the button, checking stored values and doing something appropriately. So that's gonna cover this up. Hopefully that clears up for the person who had the question. It also shows you a way to easily at runtime use the on selection changed node inside of our combo box.
If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.